Goes of Politics, NRI, on RI Free Radio. Just as the rainbow has many colors, there are multiple opinions and views of the way our state government should be run. Let us be to the point and deliver the truth. It is time to break down the colors of politics. Hello, and thank you for listening to Colors of Politics and another night of some creativity breakdown. And tonight's broadcast is sponsored by doTERRA in Rhode Island, essential oils and more for you and your home. Find online at tinyurl.com slash R-I-D-O-T-E-R-R-A. And today is the last day to register to vote online in Rhode Island. And if you want to do a mail-in ballot, the 18th is the last day to do that. So the deadline is here. And if you want to make a difference in what happens in your town, in your state, and even at the national level with Congress and the president, you need to register to vote online in Rhode Island by midnight tonight. You can do that at vote.sos.ri.gov. And again, you can also have the option of a mail-in ballot. You don't have to feel like you have to get down there to vote on the 8th. So you can request the mail-in ballot from your local canvasser office, and you have to have it turned in by the 18th. So, just a comment I feel I need to say tonight of what is all over social media the last 24, 48 hours. Um, I personally will not be letting a comment from over 10 years ago impact my view of an individual. We all have skeletons and some more than others, and none of us would like to be judged by a comment we made over 10 years ago. Anybody have any idea what I'm talking about? Yeah, Donald Trump and his ridiculous comments that were quite ridiculous. But um, I don't see the reason to judge someone over something they said over 10 years ago. So that's my little mini rant on that topic. And it's just all over social media and just felt the need to have to say that. Bringing it back to Rhode Island, however, we have the Speaker of the House, Mattiello, now saying that he will lower or diminish car tax as the election time comes near. But just in June, when it was mentioned by other people in the state house, he was against it and didn't go for it. So we have Frias, which is his opponent in that district. I believe it's District 15. He's gaining speed and has some traction up in Cranston. Might be worth you guys taking a look at what are your options and who besides Mattiello would you like to see in the state house? Are you truly happy with the way the Speaker of the House conducts business and what he's doing up there? How about the fact that he was the main reason, besides the governor herself, that truck tolls got pushed through? And now our truck tolls just got federal approval and a green light. They are not actually apparently against the law to only target the truck tolls versus on your cars also. However, guess what they're doing now? Now they want a plan in place for how to ticket and get those trucks if they try to avoid the tolls if they want to take an exit to go around the toll gantry if they want to just avoid they're actually trying to figure out how can we ticket you how can we make you pay us anyway doesn't that sound like a great and wonderful way to do business you know because that is such a great amount of freedom and free enterprise happening right there with that mentality. <laughs> Things need to change around here and the way that it's run, and I hope more and more of you are realizing this. I mean, the September primary already showed a shift as we moved out five or maybe six incumbents from their seats during the primary just in September. So there is a lot of you out there being willing to get out and make some change. And it's pretty neat to see what just might happen next month and how many more seats just might be shifted and no longer those that are nice and comfy being used to getting back up there without much of a fight. So November 8th, mark your date books. That's the day. There's so much happening this election year between Rhode Island and our environment and the national, boy, is it just not a perfect match that now we have this whole 
clown fiasco happening nationwide because our national campaign is definitely a circus going on out there. A circus to uh, some pretty hysterical degrees at points and some pretty pathetic degrees at points. And now you got cities with clowns terrorizing. <laughs> so it's just one heck of a year, 2016. Things going crazy in all directions. So if you're on that note, um, as voting goes, party affiliation. I don't know about you, but I think it's time to stop being directly and only voting because you feel you need to stay with your party. I mean, if you're a Democrat in Rhode Island, doesn't mean you have to be ashamed of being a Democrat, but... If your particular legislator is not doing a good job and their opponent is aligning with things that you do think will be good, then don't vote for the Democrat. Vote for the opponent. You can be a Democrat and vote for a Republican for town council or, you know, your state representative and still vote other Democrats in that you think do align. Just, I don't know, I just really don't think it's a smart decision at this point for anyone no matter what your party affiliation is to only stay within your party you really need to evaluate who's who's out there who's doing what and that includes your town council and your school committee and what are those different roles who are they those people are affecting what's going on in your town your children your schools so find out who they are get an email or a facebook address just determine, do they align with what you want? Because, <clears throat> wow, Rhode Island, are we in one heck of a boat, and it's crazy. <clears throat> and totally changing topic for a moment, Adam Kokesh. He came to Rhode Island last week. We mentioned him in our one of our previous shows, and he was here in Warwick. He was promoting his tour and advertising or campaigning or whatever word you want to plug right in there that he plans on running for president in 2020. But more importantly, the reason why I'm bringing his name up is if you haven't already looked him up, I think you should. It's Adam Kokesh and the last name is K-O-K-E-S-H. He's on Facebook. He's on YouTube got a lot of messages he's direct to the point and even sometimes pretty funny but you can also look up his website which has his book freedom it's approximately 100 110 page book and he gives away all electronic copies of it for free so you can read it online in multiple different forms whichever device that you have You can also get a copy of the book by contacting us either on Twitter or on Facebook at Colors of R.I. And we have multiple copies of the book. And so we'd be more than happy to get some of them out there. TheFreedomLine.com is his website where you can find out more of his information, his campaign, and how to get the book in the free electronic format. But if you would like the hard copy of the book, be sure to message us on either Twitter or Facebook at Colors of R.I. And we will get back to you so that we can get you a copy of his message. And it's a great book to read and then pass on to somebody else and just keep that message flowing. It's not a very long book. And we have a great artist from... Atlantic, Atlanta, Georgia, which actually used to reside in New England. And I hope I don't murder the name too bad, but I believe you pronounce it <clears throat> Nokomis. But it's N-O-K-O-M-I-S. And we have a song of hers, and it's called Stand Up, and it's about freedom and within your government, and I think it's a it's a wonderful song with a great beat to it. So if you want to take a listen, and you can also find her on Facebook, N-O-K-O-M-I-S-7. 
here she is. I've come down from the violet skies to save the day. Oh. What's going on in America today? Huh? Let's not forget we are the U.S. of A. Right. United we stand, divided we fall. fall. The way it looks, we don't even care at all. Nope. By the time peeps realize it's gonna be too late. Too late. Let's open up our eyes so we can open see our up. fate. The world right now is filled with so, so much hate. Much. Media working hard to try to segregate. Stop. Our news is censored, stories one-sided. What we see is filtered to suit the highness. Can't make our own choices, losing all our voices. It's time to make a change. They trying to take our freedom to live, freedom to fight. It's time to stand up, stand up for our rights. Give all you got, use all your might. You can't just sit back and give up all our They trying to take our freedom to live, freedom to fight. It's time to stand up, stand up for our rights. Give all you got, use all your might. You can't just sit back and give up all our rights. They trying to take our freedom to live, freedom to fight. It's time to stand up, stand up for our rights. Give all you got, use all your might. You can't just sit back and give up our rights. Even though it's so clear Faces stuck in our phones On autopilot like drones Keep ignoring it Like we got nothing to fear Can't feel safe in our homes Nothing's owned It's just loaned Why is being PC More important than being honest You can't have an opinion Without someone having A guilty conscience So quick to close their minds And go on defense Come on we in the present That's just so past tense Let's go back to basics What a focus on education What our kids are getting now It's an indoctrination So if you're ready for change It's time to take a stand It's time to rearrange We need a new plan Freedom to live Freedom to fight It's time to stand up Stand up for our rights Give all you got Use all your might You can't just sit back And give up all our rights Freedom to live Freedom to fight It's time to stand up Stand up for our rights Give all you got Use all your might Money breeds greed, and power breeds corruption. That's just the nature of our country's destruction. It's hard to find a job as a citizen, but they keep letting illegal immigrants in. Our democracy just don't make sense. When those votes come in, who's gonna benefit? Survival of the fittest if you want to keep on living. Believe in self-defense, love the Second Amendment. Freedom of speech, choosing a religion. Don't take them for granted, constitutionally driven. If you got pride in the red, white, and blue, it's time to dig. Deep and uncover the truth. Freedom to live, freedom to fight. It's time to stand up, stand up for our rights. Give all you got, use all your might. You can't just sit back and give up our life. Freedom to live, freedom to fight. It's time to stand up, stand up for our rights. Give all you got, use all your might. You can't just sit back and give up our life. Welcome back to Colors of R.I. And you were just listening to Stand Up by Nokomis, which I really hope I'm saying that correctly. N-O-K-O-M-I-S. It's a wonderful song. She wrote it and sang it herself. And just a little recap that you can find us at Colors of R.I. on Twitter and Facebook. And we have the copies of the Freedom book if you didn't hear us before the song saying that you're welcome to request one from us just send us a message from adam kokesh he's the one that distributed the books and had come to rhode island last week and you can find his website directly at thefreedomline.com we're going to be continuing this evening with talking about what you all most likely should have received in the mail within the last couple of days the beat voter information handbook be a voter november 8th that comes directly from the secretary of state website i mean sorry not the website secretary of state herself (laughs) mails these out um these are all the questions and uh the other things that you get to vote on on your ballot besides the people that you these are the 
allotting money and things like that, the different choices that you have. So the first two things of the state referenda questions, the titles of them sound so similar. You probably would think that you're uh, seriously changing the constitution of the state, which you are changing it, but by title it sounds like a much bigger deal. Number one question, state constitutional approval. Number two question, amendment to the constitution of the state. Do they or do they not sound like they'd be almost the same thing? What number one actually is, is the approval of an act authorizing state-operated casino gaming at Twin River Tiverton in the town of Tiverton. So this is an act to that shall be approved, which would authorize a facility owned by Twin River Tiverton LLC. And that is whether or not you want to see the basically the casino, go in over in Tiverton. And that's question number one, where you get to approve or reject that particular question. And if you're wondering about money, it says the referendum would not authorize any borrowing. So by approving question one, you're not authorizing money borrowing. Just to make you aware of that. Um... If you reject the question, it means you do not allow a new state-operated casino, including video lottery games. So any further information uh, when I go through these different questions, you should all have the book, but if you don't, for some reason or another, you can find them on the Secretary website, sos.ri.gov, so you can get even more detail than what I'm going to go into. But... I'm going to highlight specifically question number two, amendment to the Constitution of the state. States, restoration of the Ethics Commission jurisdiction over the General Assembly members. Now, many of you might have realized that we have been fighting for the elect- the Ethics Commission to come back, that it should be uh, something that is gone over and that the Ethics code of ethics and the general assembly should be scrutinized and have review and all of that good kind of jazz held accountable etc well there's a little caveat in this question that if you don't actually read through it you might not realize section five i'm going to read you word for word because i personally was quite shocked when i read it Immunities of General Assembly members. The persons of all members of the General Assembly shall be exempt from arrest and their estates from attachment in any civil action during the session of the General Assembly and two days before the commencement and two days after the termination thereof. And all process served contrary hereto shall be void. For any speech in debate in either house, no member shall be questioned in any other place except by the Ethics Commission as set forth in Section 8. And Section 8 is actually the part before Section 5 where it talks about putting the Ethics Commission Code of Ethics back into place. I don't know about you guys, but... um. I wasn't wanting an ethics commission to be the sole and only entity that has any ability to evaluate and hold accountable to the General Assembly members. I think they are law enforcement, FBI, or anybody else. I suppose this maybe doesn't count federally. The FBI just might be like, yeah, I don't really care about that. We're going (laughs) to... going to check into them anyway but our local police and all of those uh, anybody that was supposed to be questioning or could arrest this is very specifically stating that they their immunity from it they cannot be arrested in their estates cannot be attached any way of civil action so the We go and create an ethics commission that is then the way it's written into our voting card or ballot is saying if you approve this, that you approve the only people 
to be able to investigate and hold accountable other General Assembly members are their colleagues in the Ethics Commission. Sorry, it's not technically their colleagues. It's independent, nonpartisan Ethics Commission. Uh, don't know about you, but the way things are run currently, how independent is it really going to be? Um, it does state that it will adopt a code of ethics, including but not limited to provisions on conflicts of interest and confidential information, use of position contracts with government agencies, and financial disclosure. But all of that stuff is supposed to already be disclosed in your reports when you have a campaign or when you're an elected official. You're already supposed to disclose all that information. So... The idea of this sounds good. The way that this is written makes me feel like this this isn't so good. It, it actually makes me feel like there is more room for corruption, more room for cover-up. Because if you know the right person on the Ethics Commission is suddenly you're not going to be held accountable. Everything goes under the rug because... Now there's this Section 5 provision that says you're exempt from arrest and your estates cannot be attached. I would love for somebody to be able to reach out to me and teach me I'm wrong on this because I'd love to come on air next time and tell you that I was wrong, but I literally read it to you word for word and that's what it sounds like to me. And that's question two on your ballot and it says if you reject it means that state senators and state representatives will continue to have immunity from ethics commission prosecution but they still can be held accountable when they do things against the law from the police state police whatever that wording you'd like me to use there um so i'd rather see both i want to see the ethics commission be able to do this and i want to see them also be able to be arrested if need be i'm not quite understanding why it needs to be one or the other so somebody please colors of our eye on twitter or facebook explain to me why i'm wrong i would love to understand it better then we go into questions three through seven. That's the state bond referenda questions. So number three is about veterans home bonds. Number four, leveraging higher education to create 21st century jobs bonds. That sounds like a title trying to convince you to uh, approve or reject a certain way. Question number five, port infrastructure bonds. Number six, green economy bonds. And number seven, housing opportunity bonds. Here's what I find interesting on all of this. Um, it assumes an interest rate of 5% across the board over 20 years for all of these bonds. And all of these bonds are in the millions, which also means there is lots, <laughs> including millions, of dollars of interest. Um, so sometimes I think it also needs to be evaluated, is the full amount worth in the end? So again, three through seven, those are your bonds and what you want to approve getting out there and being money spent on. Um, number seven specifically is the housing opportunity bond, which actually has a two parts, but you can only approve or reject it. So you have the housing, of the affordable housing development at 40 million for part A. Part B is the urban revitalization and blight remediation. What a weird way to say that. At $10 million. But if you like one and not the other, you still have to approve 
the whole thing or reject it. Um, oh, yeah, so you're approving 50 grand, sorry, not 50 grand, 50 million altogether. Um, however, it is being split 40 and 10, and you don't have a way to approve one part and not the other. You have to approve the whole thing altogether. And the port infrastructure is number five at 70 million. And again, two parts. 50 million will go to the port of Davisville and Quonset. 20 million, the port of Providence infrastructure. Approve or reject. Um, haven't fully read this question to give you more details, but my instinctual reply is we have a major port in Galilee, Narragansett, and I don't see that even mentioned. So that's just my instincts from without fully reading further on that particular question. So again, my main concern is question number two and determining what exactly is this ethics commission and why are the General Assembly members exempt from arrest? And if I can find out further answers to that by next week's broadcast, I will be sure to have that be part of the information. So stay tuned on what I can determine from that particular broadcast. I mean, that particular question for next week's broadcast. And again, for those of you that didn't hear earlier, Today is the last day to register to vote online in the state of Rhode Island. You can do so via vote.sos.ri.gov. You must do it by midnight tonight. And you can pick and choose also on a ballot. So if you want to refrain from voting for the president and you only want to vote on things that apply to your town, you have that option you do not have to feel obligated to fill in some bubble throughout that entire ballot we're also going to have the new electronic ballot tracking this year which it was explained to me that it's real-time tracking so every couple of minutes it will automatically take the data and send it to the local canvassers office and then also send it up to the state's office so we will now have these computerized um ballot tracking and this will be our first election you first general election using these so it'll be interesting to see how that goes so thank you so much for listening tonight. I hope you've been more informed on your voting options in Rhode Island. This is Colors of Politics on RI Free Radio. You can find us on Twitter and Facebook at Colors of RI. And again, this broadcast was sponsored by Rhode Island doTERRA essential oils found on tinyurl.com slash R-I-D-O-T-E-R-R-A. Have a great night. <laughs>